Iowa Catholic Radio presents the Daily Mass from St. Francis of Assisi Catholic Church in West Des Moines. Father Ray McHenry, Pastor. Father John Broby, Associate Pastor. Entrance Antiphon O Lord, hear my voice, for I have called to you. Be my help. Do not abandon or forsake me, O God, my Savior. We offer this Mass for Paul Bode. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. To prepare ourselves to celebrate this sacred mystery, let us in a moment of silence call to mind our sins. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, strength of those who hope in you, graciously hear our pleas, and since without you, mortal frailty can do nothing. Grant us always the help of your grace, that in following your commands, we may please you by our resolve and our deeds. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns within each of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the second book of Kings. When the Lord was about to take Elijah up to heaven in a whirlwind, he and Elisha were on their way from Gilgal. Elijah said to Elisha, Please stay here. The Lord has sent me on to the Jordan. As the Lord lives, and as you yourself live, I will not leave you, Elisha replied. And so the two went on together. Fifty of the guild prophets followed, And when the two stopped at the Jordan, they stood facing them at a distance. Elisha took his mantle, rolled it up, and struck the water, which divided, and both crossed over on dry ground. When they had crossed over, Elijah said to Elisha, Ask for whatever I may do for you before I am taken from you. Elisha answered, May I receive a double portion of your spirit? You have asked something that is not easy, Elijah replied. Still, if you see me taken up from you, your wish will be granted, otherwise not. As they walked on, conversing, a flaming chariot and flaming horses came between them, and Elijah went up to heaven in a whirlwind. When Elisha saw it happen, he cried out, My father, my father, Israel's chariots and drivers. But when he could no longer see him, Elisha gripped his own garment and tore it in two. Then he picked up Elijah's mantle that had fallen from him and went back and stood at the bank of the Jordan. Wielding the mantle that had fallen from Elijah, Elisha struck the water in his turn and said, Where is the Lord, the God of Elijah? When Elisha struck the water, it divided and he crossed over. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let your hearts take comfort, all who hope in the Lord. Let your hearts take comfort, all who hope in the Lord. How great is the goodness, O Lord, which you have in store for those who fear you, and which, towards those who take refuge in you, you show in the sight of the children of men. Let your hearts take comfort, all who hope in the Lord. You hide them in the shelter of your presence, from the plottings of men. You screen them within your abode, from the strife of tongues. Let your heart take comfort, all who hope in the Lord. Love the Lord, all you, his faithful ones. The Lord keeps those who are constant, but more than requits those who act proudly. Let your hearts take comfort, all who hope in the Lord.
Hallelujah, hallelujah. Whoever loves me will keep my word, and my father will love him, and we will come to him. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, Take care not to perform righteous deeds in order that people may see them. Otherwise, you have no recompense from your heavenly Father. When you give alms, do not blow a trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, to win the praise of others. Amen, I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right is doing so that your arms given may be secret. And your father who sees in secret will repay you. When you pray, do not be like the hypocrites who love to stand and pray in the synagogues and on street corners so that others may see them. Amen, I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you pray, go to your inner room, close the door, and pray to your father in secret. And your father who sees in secret will repay you. When you fast, do not look gloomy like the hypocrites. They neglect their appearance so that they may appear to others to be fasting. Amen, I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, anoint your head and wash your face so that you may not appear to others to be fasting, except to your father who is hidden. And your father who sees what is hidden will repay you. The Gospel of the Lord. Dearly beloved in Christ, in Matthew chapter 6, verse 1 to 6, and 16 to 18, we reflect on these three important Jewish pious acts. I take that again. In Matthew chapter 6, verse 1 to 6, and verse 16 to 18, we reflect on these three important Jewish pious acts. Prayer, fasting, and alms given. Now, prayer has to do with a person's relationship with God. I take that again. Prayer has to do with one's relationship with God. Arms given has to do with one's relationship with his or her neighbor. And finally, fasting has to do with one's relationship with creation. And so there are three pious acts, acts. Prayer has to do with one's relationship with God. Arms given has to do with one's relationship with his or her neighbor. Fasting has to do with one's relationship with creation, with what God has created. And so in these three pious acts, we have a perfect relationship with God, with our neighbors, and then with God's creation. Now, Matthew will offer three important locations where these pious acts are performed. The first is street corners. The second is the synagogue. And the third is hidden places. 
Now, in the street corners is the common place, the place for the world, the place where everything goes. And so among the Jewish people, in the street corners are the business places, the market squares. Now, he says, when you pray in these places, you don't get any reward. Why? These are places of unbelievers. And even in our time, you could even be accused of infringing upon the rights of others. When you begin to pray in a public place, in a marketplace, in a mall, at Casco, imagine me coming to see me praying so hard at Casco. Probably you say, Father John is getting some mental problems. And so in the time of Jesus, he says in the street corners, these are not the places to, to pray. You even turn people off because they don't even believe in what you are doing or they may be against what you are doing. Then he goes to the synagogue. The synagogue is a place for believers, for people who have been instructed in the law. And if they really know what they are doing, you don't have to show off your pious acts because they already know, except it is for competition and self-glorification. You don't have to show up that you can pray. You don't have to show up that you can fast among believers because we already know that fasting is good. We already know prayer is good. And we already know about arms given. So in the synagogue, among believers, you don't have to show off. The third place is the hidden place. And the hidden place is the ambience of God. That is the location of God. He is in the hidden place. Where you enter into your room, where you lock the door, and you are one-on-one -on -one with him. Because he is the only one who is able to evaluate the actions of men and women and reward them accordingly. And so my dearly beloved, these are important pious acts, not only among the Jews, but also among us as Christians. We need to pray to solidify our relationship with God. We need to be kind and generous, arms given, to also show that we care about our neighbors. And then also, my dearly beloved, we need to fast to establish a perfect relationship with all of creation. But this, my dearly beloved, pious acts must be done in the hidden places. We need not blow the trumpet. We need not show off. And we need, we need not no, make it a public show. What does it mean? The focus of every pious act is God. The moment the focus becomes horizontal, you have missed the point. And so whatever you do as a Christian, your focus must be God. If you are praying, your focus must be God. If you are giving alms, the focus must be God. If you are fasting, the focus must be God and must never be to attract the attention of people. Shall we rise in prayer? For the Pope and all clergy, may the Holy Spirit bless and perfect them in their faithful proclamation of the gospel. Let us pray to the Lord. For world leaders, may the Holy Spirit empower them in working to protect the dignity and sanctity of human life from conception through natural death. Let us pray to the Lord. For all who are on the fringes of society, may the Lord provide for the acceptance, for the acceptance and help that they need. Let us pray to the Lord. For our faith community, may we be transformed by this sacrament and renewed in both prayer and action. Let us pray to the Lord. For all who have died, especially for Paul both, 
May they enjoy eternal life in heaven and behold the face of God. Let us pray to the Lord. For our personal and private intentions, let us pause in the silence of our hearts. And for all our fairness, let us ask our mother Mary to intercede on our behalf as we pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And may God, our loving Father, meet each one of us at the point of our various needs through Christ our Lord. Blessed I, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O God, who in the offerings presented here provide for the twofold needs of human nature, nourishing us with food and renewing us with your sacraments, grant, we pray, that the sustenance they provide may not fail us in body or in spirit, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for although you have no need of our praise, yet our thanksgiving is itself your gift. Since our praises add nothing to your greatness, but profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you and with joy we proclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At a time he was betrayed, and entered willingly into his passion. He took bread and given thanks, broke it, and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more given thanks, he gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is a chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be guided into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of church, Israel Francis, our Pope, 
and William Johnson, our bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servant, Paul, both whom you've called from this world to your son. Grant that he was united with your son in a death like his, may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may marry to be co-heirs to eternal life, and we praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, O my Father, in each of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant their peace and it in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, behold the Lamb of God. Behold Jesus who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. As this reception of your Holy Communion, O Lord, foreshadows the union of the faithful in you, so may it bring about unity in your church through Christ our Lord. 
The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you. The Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. The Mass is ended. Have a wonderful day. You've been listening to the Daily Mass from St. Francis of Assisi Catholic Church in West Des Moines on the Iowa Catholic Radio Network. 